With just over a month to go before the US election, this week on McBlog we have a special focus with the influence that the President and Vice President can have on the direction of our culture and the values we hold as a society. Even here in New Zealand, we need to know just who the candidates are, their values and what direction they will indirectly lead the world in. Where do they stand on the issues that matter to us? Life, marriage, family, religious freedom. What's their agenda in the area of identity politics, LGBTQ++, gender ideology, critical theory, environmental alarmism, drugs, abortion, euthanasia, social engineering, and many others. This week, we're replaying our previous examinations, our previous McBlog episodes of each of the candidates. Vice President Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz on one side, former President Donald Trump and J.D. Vance on the other side. Yesterday, we focused on Tim Waltz. Today, we focus on J.D. Vance. So, as I said, uh, J.D. Vance is a relative newbie. He was first elected in 2022. Uh, And interestingly enough, uh, Vance is close with entrepreneur and tech investor Peter Thiel, who supported Vance's Senate campaign, which, uh, as you'll see, the New Zealand Herald seemed a little annoyed about. Teal is the uh, co-founder of PayPal and Palantir Technologies and an early investor in Facebook and became a New Zealand citizen in 2011, although there was some questioning about how much time he actually spends in New Zealand. And Thiel is connected to uh, Trump and a supporter. Shock, horror. Now, I am grateful to the team at the Family Research Council for their summary of a lot of uh, what J.D. Vance is about. And in fact, the David Clausen, the director of the Centre for Biblical Worldview at Family Research Council, congratulated Vance, noting that Senator Vance was one of only five senators who received a perfect score on FRC's action scorecard for votes taken in 2023. So that's a little bit like how value your vote. Now, Vance once compared abortion to slavery. Well, that's true. Vance also scored an A- minus from Students for Life Action and an A-plus from Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America, one of the largest pro-life groups in the States. Michael New of the Charlotte Lozier Institute highlighted positive aspects of Vance's abortion record, including his decision to speak at the Ohio March for Life. Well, there we go. Perhaps we can get him to speak at the New Zealand one on December the 7th in Wellington. Bit of advertising there. And while running for office in 2022, Vance said the states could have different abortion laws, so a bit of a Trump approach, but that there should also be a reasonable minimum national standard. Uh, And there was such a bill which would limit abortion to the first 15 weeks of pregnancy or longer in the cases of rape or incest. Uh, He said that was a reasonable bill. And he attacked his opponent, a former pro-life Democrat, if there is one, uh, Tim Ryan, for supporting abortion to birth, which most Democrats do, sadly. And Vance told him, as much as you call me an extremist, you're the extremist on this issue. Here's what uh, J.D. Vance said on a very recent episode, just last week actually, on the abortion pill. On the question of the abortion pill, what so many of us have said is that, look, um, we, we certainly don't, the Supreme Court made a decision saying uh, that the American people should have access to that medication. Donald Trump has supported that opinion. I support that opinion. I think it's important to say that we, we actually have to have an important conversation in this country about what our abortion policy should be. Uh, Donald Trump is the pragmatic leader here. He's saying most abortion policy is going to be decided by the states. Uh, We want to make it easier and more affordable for young women and parents to have families to begin with. We want to lower housing costs, eliminate the surprise medical bills that so many families see after they have a baby. That's the Trump and Republican approach to this issue. uh, Meanwhile, Joe Biden wants taxpayer-funded abortion up to the moment of birth. It's so crazy to me how the Democrats frame this as Republicans. Just let me me finish, Chris. And d- d- Democra- they frame Democrats as being reasonable and pragmatic when in reality, Senator, Republicans are the one trying to find some common Senator, ground. As here. you know, abortion. Well, there we are. Well, well, she definitely didn't want to give him a say, did he? Did she? But, uh, you know, he clearly uh, put his position and said that the Democrats are far more radical. Now, he went on to say that he supported the pill, Mifepristone. Mifepristone, I think is how you say it. 
that enables early medical abortions. But what he said is actually misrepresenting the recent uh, Supreme Court decision as Trump did as well, because the Supreme Court didn't approve Miffy Pristone or examine the safety of it. They simply said that the medical professionals who were challenging it and wanted its safety examined had no legal standing to ask for that because the law allows them conscientious objections, so they're not forced to have to prescribe it. It was a technicality. Nowhere did the court examine the safety of the pill, sadly. So these comments uh, made by J.D. Vance have rightly outraged some pro-life leaders. Lila Rose, founder of Live Action, who spoke at our conference last year, said this, both J.D. Vance and President Trump support the legalization of abortion pills. This is heartbreaking and wrong. Vance was once strongly against the murder of all pre-born babies. Both men can still change their positions and we will pray and work for them to do so. The reality is we are dealing with two pro-abortion legalization tickets with the Biden-Harris ticket supporting abortions on a baby's all, through all nine months of pregnancy, as well as the political persecution of pro-life people. Now, uh, the executive director of the Catholic Action League of Massachusetts criticized J.D. Vance's comments in an interview with the National Catholic Register. He said, Vance has no principles, at least none that aren't for sale, and the asking price is cheap. Ouch. Uh, J.D. Vance is far from the first Catholic politician to be out of step with the Catholic Church's teachings on abortion. Um, uh, and of course, that is conception. Uh, life begins at conception. However, you can always judge the policies and character of a person by seeing who hates them. Abortion lobbyists labelled Vance as an alleged right-wing crank on abortion. Planned Parenthood Action labelled Vance as an unqualified anti-abortion politician who won't protect any of your rights. Yep, that bold in the original. Uh, Reproductive Freedom for All, former, formerly Nairal, Nairal, I think is how you say it, called Vance an anti-abortion extremist who is out of step with the majority of Americans. And another uh, radical group, Emily's List, said uh, was in a panic that Trump and Vance constitute the most anti-abortion presidential ticket in history. Although Ronald Reagan uh, supported a right to life amendment to the US Constitution, we talked about that in a recent episode that would have protected all children from abortion. And of course, you'll remember that um, we talked about this recently also, Joe Biden voted for that amendment during the Reagan administration. The pro-abortion PAC insisted a vote for Trump as a vote for a national abortion ban and an end to access to other essential forms of reproductive health care. In other words, killing the unborn child. Now, on a very positive, J.D. Vance has opposed experimental transgender medical interventions for minors, euphemistic, euphemistically branded gender affirming care, which sounds nice, but of course it's not. Uh, and last July, Vance introduced the Senate version of the Protect Children's Innocence Act to make interventions such as puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and transgender surgeries a felony when performed on minors. Uh, and when introducing the bill, he said, under no circumstances should doctors be allowed to perform these gruesome, irreversible operations on underage children. With this legislation, we have an opportunity to save countless young Americans from a lifetime of suffering and regret. And detransitioner Chloe Cole, who was at our conference earlier this month, said he is strong on this issue and I support him because I believe he will stop other kids from facing the harm that has plagued my childhood and has forever altered the course of my life. Now, J.D. Vance, he also said, I'll stop calling people groomers uh, as soon as they stop freaking out about bills that prevent the sexualization of my children. Very good point. In October, a few months after he introduced this transition-related healthcare bill, uh, Vance introduced the Passport Sanity Act, a bill to ban ex-gender markers on US passports that the State Department rolled out in April 2022. X means you're neither male nor female. And he wanted to get rid of it. That's why he called it the Sanity Bill. Now, the bill was uh, never taken up in committee, but Vance said in a statement at the time, the last thing the State Department should be doing is wasting its time and your tax dollars 
pushing far-left gender ideology. There are only two genders. Passports issued by the United States government should recognise that simple fact. I'm proud to introduce this bill to restore some sanity in our federal bureaucracy. But have a listen to these comments from 2022 uh, when he was speaking to Tucker Carlson on Fox News. Uh, the comments will be music to your ears. Thanks so much for coming on. So they try to, they're daring you to disagree with any of this because if you do, you hate gay people. I don't think this is about gay people in any way. I don't think it's even about sex. I think it's about controlling the most intimate decisions in your family. Yeah, it's who controls it and who benefits from that control, Tucker. You know, one of the things that's often unsaid here is that one of the biggest donors to the Democratic Party are, of course, the big pharma companies. Who benefits when parents are not allowed to make decisions exactly. regarding their kids when it comes to chemical castration? Who benefits when doctors are pressured to give these medicines to seven, eight, nine-year-old kids? Well, of course, mm -hmm. the pharmaceutical industry that gives a lot of money to the Democrats. And I think, actually, Republicans need to take a page from, from Trump's playbook here. Remember when he went after the insulin companies for making insulin too expensive, we need to say to these pharmaceutical companies, you don't get a free right to experiment exactly. on our children, right? It's insane that that even needs to be said, but of course it does in the crazy times we live in. It's such a good point. And the same <laughs> puppets of big pharma in the Biden administration who three months ago were telling us you have no choice but to take pharma's products are now telling us you have no right to to, to have any say in whether your kids take them. So it's like politicians can control whether you take the drugs. Now they're not allowed to control. Like, what's the standard? Well, it, it, the standard is clearly uh, whatever's in the best interest of Democrat values, whether those are your values or not, and whatever's in the best interest of the profits of these companies who donate to Democrats. You know, what I find so preposterous about this moment is that the, on the one hand, the Democrats are actually advocating to teach about sexuality and crazy gender theory to seven-year-old children. Yep. And on the other hand, they get offended if we throw around terms like groomer to push back against it. It's like, look, right. if you don't want to be called a groomer, don't try to sexualize six and seven-year-old children it's right. really that simple and at, at, at the end of the day like you said this is about parental rights what kind of a country do we want to live in where families control what values their children grow up in or where joe biden and the pharmaceutical companies get to do that it's pretty clear what i think 90 percent of americans what kind of country they'd like to live in i don't understand where the oh i'm really starting to like this guy uh now jd vance also has become a long-standing and outspoken advocate for increasing the birth rate uh, so raising the fertility rate, a little bit like New Zealand needs to, pointing out the political and economic problems of low population. And he's called for introducing economic incentives for families to have more children, such as making births free at the point of service. Um, here's his recent comments about declining birth rates in both the US and Europe, and he could have mentioned New Zealand as well. Not a single country, not a single country, even the United States within the NATO alliance, has birth rates at replacement level. We don't have enough families and children to continue as a nation, and yet we're talking about problems 6,000 miles away. We are being invaded by up to 10 million illegal migrants over the course of Joe Biden's term in office, and we have apparently no president with willpower to stop that problem. We have a fentanyl crisis that has led to the deaths of over 100,000 people per year in the last few years of our youngest and brightest people. Mental health crises are skyrocketing. Youth suicides are skyrocketing. And every single place, not just the United States, but every single one of the countries in the NATO alliance see similar, or in some cases, even more troubling dynamics on most of those metrics, from migration to economic malaise. What are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? China and Russia, if we want them to fear us, we need to rebuild our own countries. We need to rebuild a strong Europe and a strong America. We need to rebuild a civilization that can support conflicts instead of just run away from them. Because right now, we don't have that. We do not have a country. Yeah, there we are. So, um, you know, have more uh, children build the country. Uh, now, marijuana drug advocates don't seem to like J.D. Vance, which is also a good sign. They said that Vance appears to back the rights of states to set their own marijuana laws, which is correct, he does. He's also indicated that he's against incarcerating people over low-level possession, correct? 
but they aren't anyway. You won't find them in jail just for that. However, he voted against uh, what they call a cannabis banking access legislation, and Vance said he opposed it because he believes it was would inadvertently make it easy for illicit operators to traffic other drugs such as fentanyl. So it's allowing drug um, drug people to create bank accounts and for marijuana in legal states, but banks don't want to go near a lot of these industries, businesses. And he's argued that states that have enacted leg legislation or legalization should increase enforcement activities. He's complained about the smell of cannabis multiple times, and he suggested that its use can lead to violence, which is all true. Uh, following the Ohio vote, and they legalized recreational marijuana in his state, he said that he's not a fan of recreational marijuana, and he argued that legalization increases youth use and traffic fatalities, despite, um, yeah, you know, even though uh, the, the people try and argue that that doesn't happen. And um, two years ago, he was against uh, another person competing on the state uh, debate issue, and he made these comments. Okay, so one, I think it should be a state's issue. States should make these decisions. Second, I don't want anybody going to prison for smoking a joint. Uh, that's not at all what I want to do. The third thing is we got to be careful here not to be soft on crime, because a lot of times you'll hear somebody thrown in prison for smoking a joint, which I, I just said, I don't think that's a good idea. That's not something that we should be doing, but that's just true on paper. And if you look at the underlying charge, you'll see it wasn't just that they smoked a joint, it's that they smoked a joint and then beat an elderly woman over the head with a pistol. Those people should go to prison and just having pled down to a so-called nonviolent drug offense, they should still be going to jail. We have to be careful about how we do this. We don't want to be soft on crime for people like that. Yep, good comments. And of course, uh, just think the disaster in Oregon, the criminalization of all drugs like in Portugal have been a disaster, no matter how much the Drug Foundation tries to spin it otherwise. Now, finally, on his faith, which sort of really triggers the left. Vance has admitted that his Christian faith has grown in recent years. He grew up in a family that identified as Christian but didn't regularly attend church, yet he learned lifelong lessons attending his father's evangelical congregation. He said, I saw people of different races and classes worshipping together. I saw that there were certain moral expectations from my peers of what I should do. Uh, when he entered Yale Law School in 2010, he said he would have called himself an atheist, but in 2015, he began searching more about his Christian faith. Uh, and he said this. I think that Christianity, broadly speaking, answered important questions about character and virtue that my elite educational credentials were not answering for me. I think that at Yale Law School, where I went to law school, it was all about get the best degree, go to the best school, get the best job. And these things weren't making me a good person, but Christianity was asking me to ask much more important questions, like how do you treat this girl that you've fallen in love with, the girl that I eventually married? How do you be a good person? How do you eventually become a good father? That to me was a fundamentally Christian worldview. And so that led me back to Christianity writ large. But why did I become a Catholic? I mean, there are all these things that I could point to, but you know, one, I really liked that the Catholic church was just really old. I felt like the modern world was constantly in flux. The things that you believed 10 years ago were no longer even acceptable to believe 10 years later. Um, the Catholic Church was just very old. I liked the fact that I felt like it had stood really strong on some of the core moral issues. You know, I'm a very pro-life person. I've been pro-life since I was 14 years old. But I think any, anybody who's looked at the history of the American Christian conservative movement would give a lot of credit to the Catholic Church for pushing that movement in a more pro-life direction, especially in the 1970s. Um, but it, it was just, you know, a lot of the people who were really, really influential to me as I thought about how to be a good Christian in this new era of my life were Catholics. Yeah, so uh, he went back to his faith. He joined the Catholic Church. And if you go to his Twitter account, it says Christian, husband, dad, and then U.S. Senator for Ohio. Ohio. Uh, if he's elected, J.D. JD Vance would be only the second Catholic vice president in the US history because, uh, well, Vice President Joe Biden at the time under Obama also identified as Catholic. Uh, Vance is going to turn 40 on August the 2nd, uh, which would also rank him as the third youngest Vice President behind Richard Nixon and John Breckenridge. Now, Vance met his wife, who was born in San Diego to Indian immigrant parents. 
when they were both at Yale Law School and they got married in 2014, have three children. Uh, Mrs. Vance is Hindu, but very supportive of J.D. Vance's search for his own faith. Now, just finally, J.D. Vance gave a speech called Challenges at Home uh, in 2021. It was a gathering of a, a group of young conservatives. And it sounds like he'd be a great supporter of our Woke Up New Zealand website because he talks about how woke the major corporations have gone. Have a listen. You know, one is recently this, this Texas abortion law. Okay, Texas tries to pass a law that protects the right of the unborn to live their lives. And set aside the legal technicalities about whether that law is ultimately going to survive legal challenges. I don't know. I went to law school, but I'm not, a, I went to Yale Law School, so I'm not a very good lawyer. Um, <laughs> But the, the fundamental problem revealed itself because virtually every major big corporation in this country felt the need to issue a statement in support of not the unborn babies, but in support of people who might want to abort them. Uh, a few major corporations actually put a lot of money behind the effort to make it easier to achieve an abortion. And the one CEO that I'm aware of, a medium-sized tech company who actually spoke up on behalf of the unborn, was fired three days later after he issued a statement. Like, if we're unwilling to make companies that are taking the side of the left in the culture wars feel real economic pain, then we're not serious about winning the culture war. And so that is, that is challenge number one. So challenge number two is just basic truth telling. We live in a society that is terrified to tell the truth and it takes a number of different forms. On the left, people are terrified to actually point out the obvious that men and women are different, that they want different things, uh, at least as, a, as an average matter, and that there are real biological, cultural, religious, spiritual distinctions between men and women. I think that's what the whole transgender thing is about, is like fundamentally denying basic reality. Uh, that's, that's a problem that you can't speak the truth, but it actually takes a different form on the right, which is I think those of us in this room, especially people who have been trained in conservative institutions as part of the conservative movement, we've like lost our ability to even think about some of the big challenges because, you know, we, we, we sort of want to speak in this like politician or bureaucratic gobbledygook instead of being very honest about what's really going on. So like a couple of examples. Yeah, some really good comments there. He also admitted an aspect of his faith in the same speech while telling us to toughen up against the names we may be called. And look, I understand this desire to not be called terrible names. It's like, yeah, okay, this person believes crazy things, but I bet if you're being honest with yourself, every single person in this room believes at least something that's a little crazy, right? I mean, I believe the devil is real and that he works terrible things in our society, that's a crazy conspiracy theory to a lot of very well-educated people in this country right now. Um, even though, of course, they participate in it without knowing about it, but that's a separate, a separate matter. <laughs> so look, compared to Biden and Kamala Harris, J.D. Vance looks like a saint. He's not perfect. I think he's being a bit slippery on the abortion issue. But overall, he appears to be a social conservative. Now, some people say, Bob, why your obsession with the US? Why the obsession with who might be the next president and vice president of another country? Well, it's because of the flow down effect on Western culture. I'm concerned about the precedent being set by Trudeau in Canada, Albanese in Australia, Starmer in the UK now, and what Biden is doing in the US. And look, I'm not the only one concerned about what happens in the US. The left-wing media in New Zealand manifested when Roe v. Wade was overturned in the US. Do you remember that? They went ape. It was a US case, a US law. But the left knew the impact it could have on our laws and culture. And so do I. So to those who say that we should ignore overseas politics, I simply say, wake up. Now, it could be that we don't uh, have Biden and Harris running on the Democrat side. In fact, it may have changed by the time you watch this. But whoever is running, we will continue to examine their statements as well as we have been with Trump's uh, over the past couple of months because of the trickle down effect and leadership in our Western culture. We have to be awake with what's going on. Mm -hmm.